Come on, what's up, me poor love and come on, love and come on. My name is Abu Sisi. I've uh, worked in different parts of the world. I uh, started off working here in Sierra Leone. I worked in the UK, in America, in uh, Botswana, in Swaziland. I, I've been working with the, the university. I'm retired now. I started off as a teaching assistant at Jala University in Sierra Leone here, and then rose up to the position of uh, vice chancellor. I don't know if I could describe myself as being very holy when I was young, very young. And I was in primary school. And I was uh, a large Jebusisi, whose voice was very nice, you know. I enjoy, just enjoyed listening to him. So I used to travel all the way to go to attend his, uh, his prayers in the morning, just because of his voice. Uh, but one day, I met some young man who said, asked me where I was going, and I said I was going to pray. And he said, where? I said, I to the mosque with Allah the And he said, no, 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 let's go to Ahmadiyya. I said, what, I said, what is Ahmadiyya? He said, well, let's just go, you know, to Gori Street. So I said, okay. So I went uh, to Gori Street, and uh, there was a big difference, you know. I liked uh, Allah the Gibbous, voice when he was reading the Arabic, was beautiful. But I uh, was reading the book, the Arabic book, then he would close it. And I never really got the message because I didn't understand Arabic, you know. So I was just enjoying his voice, and that was all. So I, I wasn't getting it. Then this boy took me to my dear. And uh, after prayer, the Imam just came, read a small piece from the Holy Quran. And he spent all the time explaining the meaning of that piece. And it, it really touched me and I said, aha, this is what I've been looking for. You know, so at the end of the, the, the morning prayer, I went to him and I said, thank you very much, sir. I said, this is the first time somebody has actually explained a passage of the Quran to me, you know, in the prayer. Well, I have been praying. I said, but this is, this is, so I enjoyed it. But but that's that's how I got into my deal. So it's it's that that way, the way he he played and the way he explained small piece of the Arabic from the Quran, and he spent the whole time talking about the meaning of that piece. So I went each time I left, I went home with a message, and that's how I just got stuck to my deal. You never went, never went back to any other sect. And uh, I said that I had enough light from interacting with Ahmadis. And I, so I've been an Ahmadi for quite some years now. Uh, based on what I've said, without the promise we said, I'd already been warning to Ahmadi. You know, it was when I started searching and asking people to tell me more about Ahmadiyyad. That's when the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet of uh, Ahmadiyyad started coming in. You know, but everything they said about him was just so inspiring to me. Uh, and I, I just got hooked more and more into Ahmadiyyad. And uh, it's, it's everywhere in the world that I've gone to, I've always asked first thing, where is the Ahmadiyya Mosque? Where? I accepted, I signed the bayats, and uh, I think I am a very simple, it made me very simple in my life. Uh, I don't see myself as having done anything wonderful. You know, I can even play with a child. Uh, it's, I see everybody as God's creation. You know, so it's it's been. I hardly get angry at people. You know, I, it's made me softer in my life, and and uh, I think it's it's being gentle has made me a lot of a better person 
it was just a feeling inside me uh, that this is this is the best thing you know nobody has ever explained to me about islamic teachings and so on better than what i found in the abadia situation uh, so they, they and, and that was a long time that was and i was really young and i have I've never been able since way back then, I've never found anything that injects any doubt in my mind about Ahmadiyyad. I've enjoyed and I'm very proud to be an Ahmadiyyad.